Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO. This is one of a series of videos expanding on the Success Stories Shared Initiative, started in South Africa by Linky van der Merwe of Virtual Project Consulting and Louise Worsley of PyCubed, and which has their enthusiastic support. Aldous Huxley said that men do not learn very much from the lessons of history is the most important of all the lessons of history. Project management research has shown that project managers prefer to learn by face-to-face -face interaction rather than by searching through lessons learned databases. I think that project managers can learn a lot from each other's success stories and even more from sharing their scars. So as part of my campaign for real project managers, on your behalf, I'm talking to some real project managers I've had the pleasure of working alongside so that you can learn from their experience. Today, I'm delighted to have with me Eileen Roden, who's going to share some of her experiences. Eileen, I'd like you to start, please, by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. So, um, when I graduated, I joined the graduate scheme and went into IT and um, did normal IT technical development and delivery um, and then um, was not the best programmer in the world and then uh, gradually got recognised for being able to kind of manage things through and get things delivered by other people and applied for a job as a project manager and got appointed as a project manager. So that's how I kind of right from the very beginning got into to project manager. So I've done project management for a number of years but since then I then progressed on to doing an HR role and then went into PMOs um, ostensibly looking at the resource profiling and costing for resources on projects and then as you know, fell into the PMO and never kind of climbed out since and just reveled in being PMO. And what do you do in the PMO world now? So there's a, there's a number of things that I do. So I still do a lot of training and consultancy. I work with organisations, predominantly with their PMOs, uh, looking at how they can improve projects and programme delivery within the organisations. Um, and the other thing which probably takes up most of my time now um, is working with PMO Flashmob, PMO Conference, and pay more learning where we kind of offer um, opportunities for uh, individuals and organisations to increase the skills and capability and a networking opportunity for PMO professionals of whatever stage they are in their career. Okay, so looking back on your project management experience, can you tell us about um, a SCAR, so something that went wrong on a project um, that you were managing and what you learned from it? So I'll take you back to the very first project that I managed. It was a really exciting project. It was part of the privatisation of the gas industry. And we, um, we were writing the very first system that had embedded postcodes. So it was kind of brand new technology. I'd been asked quite uh, legitimately for a project plan. So I uh, sat in front of my PC, because uh, that's what project managers do, and um, open Microsoft Project, because that's what project managers do. <laughs> and um, I started uh, putting together the project plan. So that was great. So four phases of the project. Yes, they're the big kind of the big starting point. Absolutely. So um, implementation right then. So we do some coding, some testing and we transition to go live. Excellent. We do that. Um, new technology. Not quite sure how we would go about doing that. So I, I understand all of the words, but actually the detail I didn't know. And I was absolutely convinced that as the project manager, that I needed to be the technical specialist and tell everybody on my project what needed to be done. Right. I, and I sat um, in this new kind of position in the, as project manager and I sat and sweated for three days looking at these kind of these seven tasks on my project plan thinking, do you know, oh, I, I know testing, yes, we'll do some, um, we'll do some uh, unit testing, we'll do some integration testing and unit testing, a uh, user testing, so I can, I can go down to the next level of duty with a bit of thought. And then I still kind of, because it was such a new technology um, and, a, and a new concept, you know, it had never been done before. And so I fortunately had a, a really good line manager who kind of spent some time with me on the kind of the end of the first week saying, how's the plan going, Eileen? And I'm going, I'm getting there, lying through my teeth. And they said, show me what you've got so far. And he'd also spotted the fact that I'd sat at my desk for three days with the screen open. And um, obviously I was very ashamed and kind of, this is all I've done, uh, mortified basically, right? This is, this is one way of getting moved back down to being a developer and not being the project manager. Right. And he, he suggested perhaps I might ask the project team. What do you mean ask the project team? Well, perhaps they've got some ideas on how we can approach this. 
uh, and come up with what needs to be done and the plan. And I said, but surely they're expecting me to, to tell them that. And, and they say, he said, well, why? He said, surely the, kind of the whole idea of putting the plan together is to deliver something that everybody's comfortable with and bought into that everybody's confident in terms of delivering. And he says, you're not going to get that until you actually speak to people. And, um, and therefore, I was introduced to post-it notes. Mm-hmm. So it was it was quite liberating actually because because I, I did have some technical knowledge, then I could ask all of the questions, but actually could watch the team that we knew who, who was going to be working on the team actually kind of work through some of the issues. And actually, it's amazing when you kind of put four or five people in a room how much they spur of each other and kind of shoot ideas. So we actually ended up with, and, and you know, the first kind of couple of sessions, we probably ended up with 80% fit because it was so new. But it was, uh, it was also quite surprising that they hadn't expected me to tell them everything. So that was a whole new ball game to me, that actually as a project manager, I may be able to contribute to the planning and facilitate the planning session, but I'm not expected to know anything and everything about that. So what would you recommend to others that they should do as a result of your experience? It's very much, uh, and we say this, I I was running a course um, and one of the icebreakers I do uh, frequently is um, tell me one thing you are and one thing you're not. And and this uh, gentleman had said, um, well, I am a project manager. And that, great, that's the answer to the first question. A second one, he said, I'm not one of those project managers who kind of does project management by walking around. He said, I like to do my project management, kind of sitting at my desk with Microsoft Project. And it was quite interesting because in my head I'm saying, I think you need to go back and revisit your first question. Um, (laughs) Because it is recognising that as a project manager, you're there to pull all of those strands together. And working in a project team, it should be just that. And actually, even if you're the project manager and not involved in the technical delivery, you're still part of the project team. Yeah. And so actually, you know, the building that team through the planning process meant we were all in the same page and delivery goes much better. Even if it goes wrong, you actually feel better about the project because everybody feels they understand. So I would always say to uh, project managers, don't start writing tasks on Microsoft Project. It's definitely not a way to start planning. And planning is a process that is away from the PCs. Planning is something you do potentially in open forum with the project team. What you put in terms of pulling your plan together is the output of planning. It's not the planning process. So yes, so it's always about kind of using your project team and using their skills and expertise and letting them have a say in the order and the kind of the sequence of events and actually determining how much time and what's involved in each of those tasks. Okay, Um, and can you tell us about a success story? So something that went well on a project you were managing or something that you do regularly that contributes to project success? Well, funny enough, it was the the same project. I just want to kind of do something that we did kind of really well on that project. Mm -hmm. And that is about understanding why you're doing the project and how it fits in either to the programme or into the business. So we were doing the front end system that says if the hard drives all go down, the big servers go down, we have a um, a system at the kind of that sits on a PC that allows us to identify an address so we can go to a gas escape. And the idea was is that um, we could still get a gas man out to the gas leak, regardless of kind of the whole big system being down. Um, but it was only going to be used if the whole system was down. Right. But what we identified through going through the kind of the analysis and talking to how it was going to be used and talking to the people who were doing the kind of the, the full system about how the address how the address uh, was going to work, we identified that fuzzy matching to 19 million addresses was probably going to take a bit of time. So actually what we uh, ended up was changing the design of the overall program that says actually what was seen to be the contingency system, actually we were used as the front end of the system for every query because we could get to address much quicker and then we could use the, the big mainframe system to provide us with additional details. But it would actually reduce the processing time mm-hmm. from minutes to seconds where, where you've got 50 minutes to guess, get to a gas leak, minutes yeah, are important. Yeah. So I would never have 
uh, understood that, the system would never have been designed the way it currently works had we not understood how we fit it in. If I just said, actually, what we're doing is a front-end contingency system, right, guys, let's get on with our development and focus purely on what we've been asked to do without understanding how it fitted, the whole program would have suffered and we would have struggled to do what we needed to do as a business further on down the line. So it's about at that front end asking the questions about how is my system or how is any of my kind of whatever I'm delivering as a project, how is the business going to use that? How does that fit in with the work environment? And where are all of the links with the other things that are happening around my particular project? Eileen, thanks for your time and your insights. So today we've heard from Eileen about how she recovered from something that went wrong on a project and about something that she did that helps projects to go well. Anton Chekhov said, knowledge is of no value unless you put it into practice. I believe the value of learning comes not from documenting the past, but from changing what we do in the future. So my challenge to you is what will you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result of Eileen's experience? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and found it stimulating, please leave a comment or a like or both or share it with others on social media. If you think these videos are interesting, let me know and I'll make more of them. If you want to appear in one, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>